Okay, guys, welcome back to the Burp Sweep class. Burp Sweep. Burp Sweep is hands down hands down, probably the most popular web app testing tool today. But what I often find when I talk to people about Burp Suite is a lot of people really aren't comfortable with the tool. They'll say things like, well, I use it. And, you know, you'll start asking people like, well, do you load your own fuzz database? Uh, you know, are you comfortable with doing Burp extensions and extending Burp and adding your own plugins to it or integrating Burp with other tools? And you kind of look over and you notice that they kind of gloss over. Okay, the first thing that I run into with AppSec is just how complex it feels. Um, it's, it's tough. I think most of us who came from a network or system administration background often feel like web app, you know, smash dead in your face, like out of nowhere. You, you know, the world was so easy for those of us who were sysadmin, netadmin guys. And then to make this transition to, to the AppSec world, especially if you're like me and did not have a strong development background, it was tough. Most of you came up the old fashioned way. You were help desk, you were PC tech, you were systems administrator, you were network administrator. Uh, you know, in me personally, that was my learning path, right? I, I started literally selling computers at Staples. Then I got a help desk job. Then I got a system administration job. Then I got a network administration job. Then I got a security job. Like I literally went through those steps on the systems and network side. Then I became an intrusion analyst. So then I was an IDS guy first. Then I became a pen tester. So I, I kind of felt like that's the way nature intended, right? So if you guys look at this picture, how many of you guys, you feel comfortable here? It's a rat's nest, but you feel comfortable here. You can go into that network and look at that rat's nest and you feel good. This is you. You're like, hey, man, this is where I came from. I've been here for years. You're like a pig in the mud. You're like, this is my place. Well, around 2008, for me as a pen tester, pen testing started to move more toward AppSec. And, and I, for one, struggled. From 2008 to about 2010, I would say those were my hardest years as a pen tester because transitioning into the AppSec world for me was extremely difficult. Uh, like I said, not having a development background, it, it was just hell. Just hell. It just seemed like everybody just knew so many things that I couldn't find a logical path for, for how to learn them. It was so hard. Okay. So, guys, as I look at an app and you look at this diagram of an app, right, and you see, like, the data level, the data logic level, the, the, the UI of the APIs and the, the business logic layer and how all these things connect together and how they interact with web services. And when I saw this stuff, it, it just scared me, quite frankly. I, I, I didn't I didn't get it. You know, how, how does how does all this work? You know, how does this stuff talk? I, I, I didn't get it. I felt lost. You know, that's just the simple truth. I just felt lost. I tried to look for places that could help me, right? And I, I, it took me a couple of years, and I finally came up with my methodology, and that's what I'm going to teach you right now, right? So you're going to find that a lot of people are very comfortable with things like Turing's, per, Turing's primitives, uh, programming logic, uh, data structures and algorithms, uh, object-oriented programming, and, you know, if, if you've got a strong computer science background and this stuff makes a lot of sense to you, um, you're going to find that I'm a very different teacher um, because I don't teach this way, right? I am a normal guy, right? I like sports. I like barbecuing. You, you know, I'm, I'm a regular guy, and I teach security that way, okay? So, 
my first exposure with trying to figure out this stuff was something called the OWASP testing guide. The OWASP testing guide. And for me, it was absolutely the worst thing in the world. Nothing confused me more. Uh, nothing made it so difficult for me to do pen testing because I literally thought it was a tactical guide to performing penetration tests. So I'll show you what I mean. So let's say I go here. So I open up this doc and it's awesome, right? Again, guys, I'm not saying it's bad, but to think that it's literally a guide that you use to perform a, pen, a web app pen test, it is not. So it breaks down your basic structure of penetration testing, right? OWASP testing, principles of testing, testing techniques, deriving security requirements, right? It's very good. And then you start scrolling down in here and you say, okay, well, here's our framework, right? Here's what you do before testing. Here's what you do during testing. Here's what you do during development. Here's what you do during deployment. Here's what you do during maintenance and basic operations. And here's how the SDLC works. Really good. And then they've got all these steps, right? So you can see that it starts off with, you know, here's my checklist. Um, here's how information gathering works. And then they've got all these different steps, you know, for information gathering, right? Conduct, conduct search engine discovery, uh, fingerprint the web server, enumerate the applications on the web server, identify application entry points, map execution paths. You know, so again, I didn't have a development background. So I was like, okay, this is the playbook. Take this. I can't go wrong. Follow the playbook. And what I started to run into is, let's say, for example, right here, 4.2.3. And it says, review web server metafiles for information leakage. And you know, it says, okay, so here's an example of a file you should look for. You should look for an example, a robots.txt file, right? So a robots.txt file is going to give you a lot of information that, you know, for example, places that it doesn't want. So here's Facebook's robots.txt file, and you can see that this is the file that the server uses to tell Google and other search engines, here's what I don't want you to spider. Please don't look in these folders. And it tells you as the attacker, right? So here, if you're Baidu Spider, don't look in these places. If you're Bing, don't look at these places, right? If you're Google, don't look at these places. So it's really good because it gives you a really good list of places, you know, things to say, hey, these are places that Google doesn't, I mean, uh, that the app doesn't want me to spider. So these are places me as an attacker, I should look. And that's awesome. You know, that that's that really is awesome, right? But there's so many other files. So I'll give an example. Here's another file, like a PHP info file. There you go. So a PHP info file is a file that tells you so, so, so much about a server, right? The configurations, libraries, uh, you know, it's certainly not a bad thing. You know, people use it when they build a server. You'll often find that they throw a PHP info file there. So during that building process, they can check to make sure that they did everything correctly. So there's certainly nothing wrong with having it. But then once you move that server from staging or dev into, uh, you know, production, you know, you want to remove things like your PHP info file, right? So it's an example of a PHP info file. And for you guys who want to know how I find them, here you go. Okay. All right. Well, the OWASP testing guide doesn't tell you to look for PHP info files. He tells you to look for meta files for information leakage. And he gives an example of a robots.txt file. Right. There's other files like, um, you know, file type AXD. Right. And you'll see that these AXD files have all kinds of juicy information in them.
there's all kinds of data in these suckers, right? Bad boys are always full of data. Again, the problem with this kind of stuff is I finally realized after a few years, I really wish I had learned it sooner, that the OWASP testing guide is really kind of like Wikipedia, right? The idea is to be able to give you information about something, but it's not really meant to be like a tactical, like procedural step-by-step -step document for penetration testing. When, what it's really designed to do is, let's say you're reading a pen test report, and it says it found XPath injection. You can go look up what XPath injection is. If you're trying to build a test plan, right, a test plan is going to be a document that describes the process. Well, then the OWASP testing guide is very good. But it's not a procedural like checklist that I would follow, right? It's not tactical enough. And that's really what I what I gained. So I really struggled with that. So then that turned into my next problem. Well, if the OWASP testing guide isn't what exactly I do, what what do you do? And then you hear guys say, Well, you have to do manual. So then you're like, Well, how do you do that? How do you do that? If I have to do manual, what do you mean I have to do manual? Okay, how? If I can help you learn about who we are, and hopefully, if you're willing to join us, this is InfoSec Addicts.